This video is brought to you by CatBeast.com. Design your own custom snapbacks and hats. Yo guys, what's up? Welcome back to another unusual money-making method video. As you guys know, in this series, you guys all send me your unusual ways to make money. I try them out. If I like them, if I think they're cool, if they make me a bit of money, I'll put them in the video, give you guys credit and everything, which is pretty cool. So for this video, before I start off, I want to tell you guys something, okay? Casting the Lunar Spell Kit thingamabobber on the Lunar Spellbook, the Lunar Hunter Kit, where you, where you get a, a free Hunter Kit and you get all those Hunter items and you can sell the Impling Jar to the Grand Exchange for profit, that's not unusual, okay? That's known. Everybody knows about that. So stop setting me that method, goddammit. Also, the Anti-Dragonfire Shield. Everybody knows that you can get a free Anti-Dragonfire Shield from Duke Ratio and Lumbridge and then you can sell in the Grand Exchange for profit and the profit's not even that good. So stop. Just stop sending me those, please. That being said, I'm not being ungrateful that you sent me those. I'm very happy that people sent me those methods. It's just I want to let you know that I probably get, every time I make one of these videos, I get about a dozen replies, you know, that includes one of these methods, uh, the, the Lunar Hunter Kit or the Enter Dragonfire Shield. So, yes, that's out of the way. Anyways, as you guys know in this series, you send me the methods. If I think they're unusual, if I think they're pretty unknown and they're going to make me okay money per hour, then I'm going to put it in the video. So if you guys have, you know, something that matches all that criteria, then make sure to send me a YouTube message or a Twitter DM or an Instagram DM or a YouTube message, whatever. Just sort of contact me with the method. I'm not going to reply necessarily to your message. I will read them though, and I will reply if I end up using the method in my video. I actually had recorded about four or five different money makers for this episode, but I ended up wanting to focus this episode specifically on one thing that has to do with the hunter skill, and that is tracking, something very few people do on this game. Now, tracking is something that has been around for a long time, but very few people do it because it's very inefficient, okay? You're going to be clicking a lot, but you're not going to be getting a lot of XP, especially uh, at the later levels. It's just way more efficient to do other methods, especially, you know, with chins being out and salamanders. It's just a lot better. It's faster XP. But with this, you're actually focusing not on the XP, obviously. You're going to be focusing on the furs that you get from these kebits. Now, the reason this one excites me is because you need absolutely no requirements for this first method. You need one hunter. You need a noose, which goes for one GP on the Grand Exchange. And you also need maybe like 1K in your in your bank. 1K you can get, you know, right off the bat, no problem. Just do the first level of the Grand Exchange or the, the first level of the Grand Exchange. The first level of the strong level of security and you have yourself 1K. I love finding requirements for a brand new account that where you can make decent money. And I think I found maybe one of the best ones out there for a level three. I might be wrong. There might be obviously more efficient ways to do it. But this one's pretty cool, like I said, because you need no requirements. One hunter. And if you hate doing Hunter, obviously it might be a bit annoying, but pretty much what you guys want to do is want to get yourself a noose, which goes on the Grand Exchange for 1 GP. You can also buy it at a Hunter Shop, hunter shop for 4 GP, but the most efficient way is just to buy it from the Grand Exchange, get yourself 1 GP, and then also, you know, have that 1K GP in your bank. If possible, you guys should wear maybe some weight reducing gear like Graceful, and if you want, you can also bring some stamina potions or some energy potions as well. You don't necessarily need them, but they, they might help if you stay there for a long time if you end up running out of run energy. So what you guys want to do is you guys want to go north of Relica to the Polar Hunter area. There are multiple ways to get there by teleporting to Relica or using the Slayer Ring to get up there, but I think the best thing you can do is maybe just use the Fairy Ring and then use the code DKS, which takes you right next to the Snow Hunter area, which is where you're going to end up going. So once you guys are there, you guys are going to run all the way up on this little random island, and you guys want to head north and then climb uh, these stairs, just send the stairs, and you're going to be in this area that has some birds flying around, and then also some random logs and some snow drifts that you can actually end up searching, which is what you're going to be doing to get yourself these polar kebits and then getting their furs. The method for doing this is pretty simple, but as I said, it's a little bit annoying sometimes because you're going to be searching things and not necessarily getting XP for every single search that you do. But what you guys want to do to start off is pretty much you're going to see these two holes on the ground. There's one north and there's one south. I personally preferred using the south one. I just found it a bit more efficient. But what you guys want to do is you want to inspect the hole. And once you guys inspect that hole, what's going to happen is there's going to be footsteps that appear out of that hole. So I inspected this one and the footsteps ended up actually going north into this random snowbank up here. And what you guys want to do is you don't want to search the hole that the footsteps go into. You want to search the holes that come out of the other side. So pretty much what you do is you don't search that hole you can, but you actually end up searching a hole that is, you know, this time it was on my case it was on the western side of the snowbank. And I searched it and you can see that more uh, footsteps came out of that hole. So then more footsteps come out and you can see that they lead to something called a snowdrift. So you search that snowdrift. And if the snowdrift says you search the snowdrift, but you find nothing, that means that you have to search other things in the area where the kebit could have gone to. So in my case, I searched the log that was right next to the snowdrift and more footsteps came out. And those footsteps are leading to another sort of hole, snowdrift in the ground. And if it says that, uh, if it says it looks like there might be something hiding under the snowdrift in your chat, go ahead and, and attack the snowdrift. And you'll most likely, I think it's 100% success rate if you are on the correct hole. 
then you will catch the kebit itself. You'll get the bones, you'll get the kebit meat, and then you also get the most important thing here, which is the polar kebit fur. So the thing about the polar kebit hunting is that it's sort of different every time. The kebit itself is going to take a different path. So in that case, obviously, it was a pretty easy one. The footsteps just went north. I searched the other side, searched the log, and then all those footsteps led to the snow drift up here, and I attacked it. But my next run is going to be different. So if I inspect the hole again, you guys can see the footsteps this time actually head west. So I have to search the other side of the snowbank, or this looks like sort of like an igloo now sometimes if you search something and it says that nothing seems to be out of place here that means that the kebit did not go in that direction so you have to search other things in the surrounding area so in my case i searched the north part of that snow drift snow bank whatever it's called and uh, it wasn't there so i went to the western side and i found the footsteps that led to another snow drift in the ground and when i searched that it obviously said that the kebit wasn't there so in this case i have to go to the surrounding area again and search uh, the logs or whatever it is so i just searched the log it showed the footsteps going north through the log up to the snowdrift that was in the northern part again. Search that snowdrift, it says that the kebit's there, I attack it, and I get myself some more polar kebit fur. And that's pretty much the method of getting yourself these polar kebit furs. You just have to pretty much track these kebits. They're gonna take a different route every time. It's pretty easy because the area is pretty small. There's not much things to search. So after like five minutes, you get the gist of the idea and you sort of get the idea of where the other holes are, what, what routes it takes, and it's pretty cool. Now the polar kebits, are sort of annoying to catch, like I said, but in my case, I caught 12 of them, and then I'm gonna show you guys what you do with these polar kebit first. So you can stay here for a full inventory if you want, if you guys are watching this and doing it at the same time. Damn, that's pretty efficient. But in my case, what you guys wanna do after you catch uh, quite a few is you wanna go to the fancy clothes store in Southeast Varick. You guys have all probably heard of it before, but you have to go through that little fence and then get to a store. It just has the clothing symbol on the mini map if you don't know what I'm talking about. And what you guys can do here is you can talk to him and ask him if he can trade or if he can make your furs that you got from Hunter in any sort of special type of clothing. And then after you talk to him, you can have the ability to make the polar camo top and then the polar camo legs. Now the special thing about these is that apparently the polar camo top is one of the best things that peers can wear. I think because the defense bonus. I don't know why somebody told me that's how I got the method from a Twitter DM. But the guy said, "Don't tell, don't say my name. Just say that it's anonymous." So I was like, "Okay." But he says that the polar cap top is an amazing thing to wear for pures, which is why they go for so much on the Grand Exchange. So you can make the polar camo top and the polar camo legs. Now, I'd obviously recommend making the polar camo top. I made the legs to see how much they would sell for on the Grand Exchange, but they were nothing compared to the polar camo top. So I made those, went to the Grand Exchange, and then sold them. And the polar camo legs did not sell for the price that we're going for at all. They actually ended up selling for like 1,500 GP each, but the polar camo tops went for 15,000 GP each. So in that like 15 minutes of catching those polar kebits, I managed to make almost 60k just off those polar camo tops. If I actually would have sold or made an entire batch of the polar camo tops, it would have actually been closer to like 90k, almost 100k from those 15 to the 20 minutes that I was there catching the polar kebits. So in the long run, obviously not the best money per hour, but the fact that you need pretty much no requirements for this and just like a thousand GP, even less than that, it's pretty damn cool and uh, and definitely one uh, a really nice rebuilding method if you guys are, are thinking about it. So I want to talk about one more, which actually is another tracking method Method, and that is tracking the Razorback Kebits. Now, the reason I'm sort of less excited about this one is because they're a bit more annoying to catch and they're not as good money per hour, but I still think they're pretty cool, so I'm going to include them in here. If you guys didn't know, you can actually get long Kebit spikes from these Razorback Kebits. Now, you can catch these with 49 Hunter in the Piscator's Hunter area, which is pretty much north of Falconry. There's two uh, different holes again. It pretty much works the exact same way as the polar hunters you guys saw earlier, but it's a little bit harder. There's a lot more bushes. You have to inspect plants as well. The tracking is going to take longer, obviously, since they are, you know, harder kebits to catch. But uh, I think you do get around 300 XP per catch. I brought a bone crusher as well, so I wouldn't have to worry about the bones. And what these things actually do is once you catch them, you get long kebit spikes. Now, these kebit spikes actually go for a lot on the Grand Exchange by themselves, but the best thing you can do is use a chisel on them, and you'll actually get long kebit bolts from these. Now, these long kebit bolts are used with the Hunter Crossbow, I believe, which is pretty popular for PvP due to the, the attack speed of the long crossbow. I think I watched some crazy... PvP video with Sweet Badass where you used it. It was nuts. Anyways, these Kebit Bolts actually go for like 800 GP on the Grand Exchange, and you get six of them per Kebit Spike. So at the end of the day, these things, these bolts are actually worth more than a lot of the most expensive bolts in the game, which is pretty crazy. So 800 GP per long Kebit Bolt, and you get six of them per Kebit Spike. Pretty much use your chisel on them. You get some terrible fletching XP from it, but they do go for a decent amount on the Grand Exchange. They do sell 
for around 800. So for me doing this method, I, again, I got 12 of these long cabbage spikes, just like 12 hunter furs earlier from the polar hunter area. And I fletched them into some log cabbage bolts. And they ended up selling after like two minutes on the Grand Exchange for 800 GP each. And I made myself a cool 57K. So again, pretty much no requirements for this, just that noose and 49 hunter. And I made myself like 60K in that 15 minutes that I was doing it. Again, not the best money per hour, but a pretty unusual and pretty unknown way of making money. Wow, this actually went a lot longer than I thought. But I thought this method was really cool and I wanted to share it for you guys. The, the polar hunter area, I think, is one of the coolest things you can do, as I said, with no requirements. But uh, hunter itself is a pretty unique skill. There's a lot of different things you can catch. You can get feathers different furs and stuff that might actually go for a lot in the rent exchange so make sure to check those out because you never know you could make yourself some unusual money you get it but yeah anyways thank you guys all for watching this video today again if you guys have any unusual money making methods you want to send me and you want to see it in the next video that i upload in this series and make sure to send them anyways guys thank you all for watching so much hope to see you next time have a good one and peace wow.